Swayam Prabha. Digital India. Educated India. Lecture number 53, we have been discussing about the gyro state and uh, we derived the equation of motion and uh, that was in more of a generalized format. So, today we will take up that uh, generalized rotational dynamics equation and then linearize it to get the gyro, st gyro state uh, linearized equation of motion and that is the equation which is used for the control purpose locally when the system is disturbed from its uh, reference condition or the equilibrium condition. So, from there whatever the di small disturbance is there. So, uh, that can be controlled using your linear control system okay. and uh, also we know as, uh, as a whole that this uh, whole system is non-linear and if we want to control the non-linear system. So, if, uh, in that case we have to design the non-linear control and uh, then we can uh, there is no bound on the disturbance, disturbance can be as large as possible and uh, if your control nonlinear control is capable of uh, tackling the problem then the system can be brought to the reference condition again. So, we start with the uh, our derived equation of motion. So, last time we have worked out So, we had here uh, the body in which this is the point O E 1, E 2 and E 3 there is a gyro state whose axis is here and a, a unit vector is there either written here in this or this format. Okay. So, here in this case V 0 is the velocity of this point okay. and P is the linear momentum of the whole system. Okay, so, for this particular case plus V 0 as we have observed that this linear momentum of the system if the center of mass of the system is located here this is the center of mass of the whole system for the whole system. Okay. So, in that case this uh, velocity of the center of mass will be V 0 plus omega cross RCM if we multiply by m, so that becomes the linear momentum of the system and as usual this gets reduced to this we have uh, discussed in the last class. So, V 0 cross omega cross R C m and if point O coincides with, with the center of mass, let us say this point is we write this as some point D, center of mass at point D, then R C m will become equal to 0 and therefore, m external gets reduced to your usual form of the rotational dynamics. this we can write with respect to the body frame means the here the B frame is E 1, E 2, E 3 which is fixed at point O. So, in the case once the O coincide with the center of mass. So, this is the situation okay. 
So, this is your so the transport theorem in mechanics. Transportation theorem or transport theorem in mechanics. We have, we have derived this earlier also. Okay. So, here in this place, h is the total, h, this is the h total. And uh, that is the total angular momentum. Angular momentum of the system. So H zero we have written as m times r center of mass cross v zero. So obviously this term will not be present because R C m equal to 0 here. So, this term will drop out and rest we have j double dot omega, where omega is the angular velocity of the frame E 1 E 2 E 3, E 1 E 2 E 3 is angular velocity is omega. And then we have written I s times omega s times E a cap. Okay, so, last time we derived all these things. Okay, and uh, so, uh, we proceed from this place and Ok, uh, this I do not remember that whether I have done this part or not, but perhaps I have done this. So, uh, for the time being I will assume that this is there and later on I will uh, come to this issue. Ok, so uh, our H then gets reduced to E cap, where E cap is nothing but the unit vector all along the axis of the gyrostate, this rotational wheel. Okay, the wheel which is rotating, so it is along the its axis, the A vector we have taken. So, A or either we have written as E A cap, this is the unit vector. Okay. So, this is the angular momentum. of a gyrostate. If you have such multiple wheels, means say now you have this body and at the center of mass of this body, this is point O slash center of mass. Okay. So, one wheel you are positioning here in this place, another wheel you are positioning in this place, another wheel you are positioning in this place. Okay. So, this is your wheel Okay, and for simplicity, we can assume that these wheels are located along the three body axis. Okay. So, here A was written. So, this A can be assumed like it is a around the E 2 vector or E 3 vector or either E 1 vector. Okay. So, we put two other wheels. So, with that, this system looks like this. You have the these three wheels and we will assume that this wheel is rotating. Okay. This wheel is rotating right from the beginning 
one of the wheel. So, we will assume that the wheel along this is rotating and we will give a bias momentum to the this rotation we call this as the bias momentum. So, we will I will come to that later on. Uh, let us look into this equation first. So, if you have this kind of situation where instead of one wheel you have three wheels. So, the same equation you will write as h equal to So, what we are doing this is the angular momentum of the whole body about point O okay, including the wheels as such you just jam the wheels, wheels are not rotating. So, this becomes a mass lumped mass sort of thing. Okay. So, we are considering this to be a rigid body. So, this is very simple equation I time this inertia dyadic for the whole system and dot omega and plus the angular momentum of the wheel at the respective position. So, here this is the wheel number 1. So, it will have the angular momentum along this direction if it is rotating this way. If it is rotating this way, so it will have angular momentum along this direction. So, we can write this as the shape uh, h 1, h w 1, h w 2 and we can write this as h w 3 means these, these are the angular momentum of the wheel 1, 2 and 3. So, this indicates nothing but h w i summation okay, i equal to 1 to 3. So, you can see that without much difficulty if once we have got the main equation. So, we got the main equation and we derived this equation for the h and this is for the force. Okay. So, from here easily we have got for the whole system without much trouble. Okay. Now, we can expand the equation. So, we will have d h by d t e equal to d h by d t with respect to the body frame or here in this case we have the e frame. So, I will write as with e notation this is with respect to inertial frame and omega cross h. Okay. Then insert those values h equal to j double bar omega cross h which will be So, why we are converting it from the inertial frame to the body frame? This is in the inertial frame and this is with respect to the body frame. Okay. Reason is very simple that the omega that you measure it is a directly measurable in the inertial space. Sitting on the earth we do not measure the angular velocity of the satellite. The instruments are on board the satellite and those instruments the red gyros they are measuring the angular velocity of the satellite. So, it is a natural to describe this kind of system in the body frame itself in terms of body frame. So, this is your m external the torque acting on the system. Okay. So, the right hand side now in the body frame this differentiation is with respect to the body frame. Therefore, in the body frame the inertia moment this inertia term it will not change and then we can write this as plus we can pick up the term from this place and write here omega cross j double bar dot omega. We club it together 
and then the other terms we can write as d by dt this is with respect to small e Now, you can see that the this part this as usual this is your the normal if uh, while we work with the rigid body dynamics. So, we derived this equation m external what we have written as the Euler's dynamical equation m external equal to g plus omega cross this we derived okay the same thing we have written in other format also like instead of writing in terms of the inertia dyadic we can write in terms of the inertia matrix and there we have written it like this times omega tilde cross times j times omega tilde okay so what is the what we can see that this term is extra addition this is the extra term appearing due to wills. Okay. This term is as usual the external torque applied on the system and uh, this is your basic Euler's dynamical equation. So, this, uh, this part this is your extra part. So, now we need to we have done this part we need to work out this part. So, d by d t we can do it on the next page. summation omega cross which term do you oh. here so this term is separate uh, we we should remove this part and this part is here written separately this term is separate this term is separate this is one term and this is one term so we have this term here and the other term is omega cross h w i. So, this is omega cross omega cross h w i and i is from 1 to 3. So, this is the term that we need to work out. Now, h w i this term we need to expand and look into okay. So, if you look here in this part here in this place. So, i s times omega s times e a cap if it is along the first direction. So, instead of writing here e a cap I can replace this as e 1 cap okay. and this is along the first direction. So, first direction is spin along the first direction like this we can write and this is the term which we have written as h 1. 
okay. and h 1 multiplied by e 1 cap we are writing as h 1 or we have given this notation h w 1 because this is for the will this is h w 1 w stands for the will. Okay. So, following this notation we should understand that here h w i this is nothing but i w times or i s times omega s times depending on the direction e i cap this is your h w i. So, once we differentiate this quantity here, so we pick up this and we have to calculate this expand this quantity. So, this quantity if we expand it, so we can see that H w i can be written as H 1 and let us name this quantity for this is for the I T S will. So, we will name this as H 1 times E 1 cap for the first will h 2 times e 2 cap for the second wheel, h 3 times e 3 cap for the third wheel. So, this is for the first wheel, for the second wheel and for the third wheel. So, following that notation, so this becomes h 1 e 1 cap and this differentiation stands with respect to the body axis okay. h 2 times e 2 cap. omega cross this summation of the uh, all the terms. So, uh, summation h w i let us write for the time being like this. So, now we have to look into this place. So, obviously, in the body frame this E 1 is not changing. Okay. If you are looking taking derivation this is e 1 e 2 and e 3 and if you are taking the derivative of this term with respect to this frame itself. So, in this frame h 1 will change. So, we will get h 1 dot e 1 cap plus h 2 dot e 2 cap plus h 3 dot e 3 cap. However, your e 1 e 2 e 3 these are the fixed vector in this frame okay, and this basically these are the unit vectors. So, these vectors are not changing with time. So, we need not take the derivative of this, but if the same thing we are doing with respect to the inertial frame. So, we have to take the that term like writing omega cross h okay, that extra term appears if it is with respect to capital E, but here in this case this will not appear because this is with respect to the body frame. So, this quantity plus omega cross this quantity which is h 1 plus h 2 plus h 3 all these are for wheels h 2 these are for the wheels uh, I have missed here. So, omega 1 omega 2 this is h wheel 3 all if the all these places h w 1 h w 2 h w 3. Carrying this subscript it is a little difficult, uh, but for clarity I am putting it here. Okay, so, all these terms can now be combined. Now, as I told you in the beginning that we also put some bias momentum. So, bias momentum I told that this will will be given a bias momentum and let us say that bias momentum is given in the negative direction of H 2 and E 2. So, that will be negative direction of this one. So, 
that will point here in this direction. So, this is H 0 E 2 with minus sign this becomes. Suppose, this is the bias means these are not rotating at that time this is rotating and this is rotating here in the opposite direction H 0 minus E 2 already I have written this plus minus if you remember that I have written there the bias momentum as plus minus H 0 times the corresponding the uh, unit vector in that direction. So, here I am assuming that it is only pointing toward the negative direction of the E 2. Okay. So, if we do that, so in that case we will have one more term here in this place which will appear as minus H 0 times E 2 cap and this is associated with this will. So, right in the beginning your wheels are suppose not rotating only this wheel is rotating and that is having the angular momentum H 0 E 2 okay, with respect to the body axis. So, this is with respect to the body axis system. Then for if the satellite is getting diverted from its equilibrium state or the reference state because of the external disturbance. So, will you will speed up these wheels this one wheel this is second this is the second one and this is the third one. Okay. So, as you will speed up Okay. So, these terms will then appear all these three terms will appear and this modifies the your equation of motion. Okay. So, once we now combine the all the terms. So, what we have written that m external this equal to j dot times omega dot plus omega cross j double dot sorry j times j dot omega. Okay, this was the basic term involved and thereafter this term is there which we have now expanded. So, this expanded term we can put here from this place this becomes h w 1 dot E 1 cap plus H w 2 times E 2 cap E 3 cap and plus omega cross this quantity here which is H w 1 times E 1 cap H w 2 times E 2 cap plus H w 3 times E 3 cap minus H 0 E 2 cap. And then we can get the term separated out along the three body axis. This is along the first body axis, this is along the second body axis, and along the third body axis. So, here what we will assume that we will assume that J double bar it is equivalent of the matrix notation, this we will write as. I 1, I 2, I 3 assuming that the other terms are 0, the off diagonal terms are 0 or either maybe uh, for better presentation uh, we can keep this as J 1, J 2 and this as J 3. So, indicating it is a diagonal matrix. Okay. So, we will have here m external in matrix notation m 1, m 2 and m 3 and this we can write as follows. So, the first term basically we can separate out like this okay, and we can work out all the terms separately. So, the first term it appears from here this times omega dot. So, the first term will be j 1 times omega 1 dot okay. 
plus ok and if you remember from your uh, attitude dynamics so this part will simply break up as minus this writing in a cyclic way i2 minus i3 so this is the part from this place to this place thereafter we have to use this so that part goes as so we write here separately this and plus h1 dot which is appearing from this particular one this is corresponding to the e1 direction and then from this place we have to work out the corresponding value so this we need to do okay. similarly the other part will be j2 times omega 2 dot minus omega 3 omega 1 i1 i3 minus i1 plus h2 dot and plus other terms that we need to write similarly this will be omega 3 dot minus omega 1 omega 2 times omega 1 minus omega 2 okay. this is the easy way of remembering this as i have told you earlier this is h3 dot now rest of the terms we need to insert here in this place whatever they are so those terms are related to your omega cross this so, omega cross here h1 or h1 times e1 cap or hw1 times e1 cap, hw2 times e2 cap and hw3 times e3 cap minus h0 times e2 cap. So, these two terms will be combined together and if we combine, so we can write this as so, uh, we are looking at this term, the second term, this is the second term in the previous equation, previous equation. Okay, so, this term then it can be reduced to omega cross already you know that this will be written as minus omega 3, then omega 2 omega 3 0 this will form this q symmetric matrix minus omega 1 minus omega 2 omega 1 and then 0 here in this place and this will operate on this vector. So, this vector is h w 1 then h w 2 minus h 0 and h w 3. Okay. So, this part is equivalent to this in the matrix format. Okay. So, from this place it is easy to write it like this and therefore, I am writing this way. So, this becomes equal to minus omega 3 times h w 2 minus h 0 plus omega 2 times h w 3. Okay. The second term will be omega 3 times h w 1 minus omega 1 times h w 3 okay. and then the last term will be minus omega 2 times h w 1 then plus w 1 times h w 2 minus h 0. So, these are the three terms and these three terms will appear in this, this place and we can write them as this term we can write first omega 2 h w 3 minus the other this term then we can pick up this particular term. Okay. So, that becomes minus omega 3 times h w 2 minus h 0. Okay. So, this completes the external torque along the first direction. Similarly, 
the other term I can take up which is omega 3 times h w 1 omega 3 times h w 1 and uh, minus omega 1 times h w 3. So, you can see that the sequence here for omega 1 you had here omega 2 and this is omega 3. So, same way here it is appearing omega 2 omega 3 and there is a minus sign here and the corresponding term h term gets exchanged omega h w omega 3 comes here and h w omega uh, h w 2 goes here and h w 3 comes here in this place. And this is the only extra term which is due to the bias momentum which is appearing here in this place. Okay. So, similarly the third term we can pick up. So, here first term is omega 1. So, we will pick up this and write here omega 1 times h w 2 minus h 0 and then minus omega 2 times h w 1. So, these are the three equations and this is a non-linear equation. Okay. So, three equations for the gyro state. So, how many degree of freedom this system has? This system has 3 plus 3 total 6 degree of freedom. Why? See, if, uh, if your point O is not coinciding with the center of mass of the system, then this translational motion for this uh, enters into the equation through V cross P. Okay. So, 3 becomes for translational which has got deleted because of the con center of mass coincide with the point O. So, this will get dropped out. So, rest we are left with then the 3 rotational dynamics equation for the main body. Okay. So, 3 degree of freedom for the main body of this satellite and 3 degree of freedom for the 3 wheels. Okay, so, total 3 into 3 total 6 degree of freedom system this is. Okay. So, here in this case If the gyro state, if this gyro state has only one wheel, so in that case this 3 will be replaced by 1, means then it becomes 3 plus 1 a total 4 degree of freedom system. But here currently this is 6 degree of freedom system. Okay. So, if, uh, we have completed uh, this uh, equation of motion and uh, Okay, next we can discuss about the linearization. So, uh, that we will do in the next lecture. So, we will continue in the next lecture. Thank you very much.